Hi, it's Kip K for Make Magazine, and I'm standing inside this leather shop getting ready to pick out just about everything I need to break the sound barrier. That's right, we're going to trigger a sonic boom of sorts as together we make a bullwhip on today's weekend project. You can check out the bullwhip in Make Volume 9 by William Gerstel, and it's on page 83. Now to make the bullwhip, the first thing you'll need is some leather hide, and I found mine at a leather shop. A piece about 8 feet long and 3 16 inch thick should do the trick. In addition to that, you're going to need some saddle soap, which we'll use a little bit later on, and you're going to need a number of tools to put the bullwhip together. The tools and complete instructions can be found in the PDF along with this video. Now there are a couple of long pieces that need to be cut out first. First it's the belly, which is uh, going to be about 8 feet long, and also the thong, which consists of connected strips of leather, and later they are plated together to form the body of the whip. So we'll be cutting out those two main pieces of the bull whip. I found a little trick that works great with this project, and that's to use a couple of vice or C-clamps to actually hold the leather down and even to hold the ruler down in place while you're making your cuts just so you don't mess it up. After all the pieces are cut, we're going to use our saddle soap, which basically prepares the leather to make it easier to pull tight, especially with the thong, to make good even plates. Now it's time to plate the thong, and unless you've plated hair, which I have never done that before, uh, it's a little time consuming. And I found a little trick uh, to make it a little bit easier to follow along with the PDF, and that's to color code each of the strands of the thong with some rubber bands, just to keep track of where you're going. Now once you're all done, you should have a nice tight plated body of the bullwhip, and it's time to move on and attach the handle and the other parts of the bullwhip. Using our 3 quarter inch dowel, we'll cut a piece about 7 inches long, and then I used a file to make a groove about 1 inch from the end of the handle. And there's a few more leather pieces that need to be cut out. One will be the leather that goes around the wood dowel that serves as the handle. One will be the keeper. And one will be a very thin strip which actually holds the keeper to the handle. You can use a nail or braids to hold the leather to the handle and wrap it nice and tight. And then attach the keeper to the handle using that very thin strip of leather that we cut out. And tie it nice and tight. The final piece, and the one that takes the most beating, is the cracker, which is attached to the very end of the whip. It's about an 8 inch length of light cotton or nylon cord. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. Dot com names as low as $1.99, plus world class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Plus, as a viewer of the Make Podcast, enter code MAKEMAG, that's M A K E M A G, when you check out and save an additional 10% on any order. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. Now, when first starting out using a bullwhip, safety is important, and that includes a hat safety glasses, and clothing that'll cover as much skin as possible until you get used to it because this whip will whip it and whip you too. By using a fluid motion, the whip crack noise is created when the wave of motion goes down the whip and it breaks the sound barrier, emitting a small sonic boom. Bull whip cracking is a fine art. There's so many different variations and ways to crack a bull whip. It takes years to really become an expert at it. In fact, Adam Winrich holds the world record for the most whip cracks in one minute, 272. So that's how you make a bullwhip, and we'll see you next time with another weekend project.